and welcome to Trucks. On tonight's show, we're checking out Volkswagen's LT with Brian. Tim is taking a look at the lightest 18-tonner on the market, the Renault Midlam. We'll also be looking at truckers' gripes and trying to solve your problems. But before all that, I'm here at Yale, taking a look at some vehicles that some of you might not consider to be real trucks. Now that's because this week we're looking at the science behind forklift trucks. The company was founded in 1844, but it wasn't until 1875 that the company first ventured into the world of forklifts with geared and electric hoists. We're one of the three largest uh, materials handling companies in the world. and We manufacture in South America, North America, Europe, uh, Japan and China. In 1994, Yale's parent company, Nacko Materials Handling Group, becoming the world's largest manufacturer of forklift trucks, producing tens of thousands of units per year. The, our holding company sells uh, roughly 80,000 trucks annually, and uh, the holding company has a turnover of $2.6 billion. The company has invested over $25 million into a new product range, the LJMJ. At present, the company produces everything from hand pallet trucks to gas-powered forklifts. In the last 18 months we've actually replaced uh, two-thirds of our product line with brand new product. In the next uh, five years we should have renewed our entire product range, which given the, the life cycle of a, of a forklift truck it is some considerable achievement. Although the principal design of forklifts is similar, there are so many different uses for them that the technology behind them is constantly changing. It used to be that a forklift truck could be a similar design um, for up, you know, upward of 10 years. With the uh, advent of uh, CAD design and, and fine uh, element modelling, we've been able to renew our product range a lot quicker. Despite their small frames, there's a lot of technology in these trucks and they're not all electric either. Well, this is a traditional forklift truck. It's yellow and it's electric. More importantly, this can carry something in the region of 1.5 to 5 tonnes. And with it being electric, it's very quiet. We're talking about 68 dBA, which means it's quieter than most cars. It carries a load through a series of hydraulics and chains, but electric is not the only way we can power this vehicle. Yes, and living in a modern day society like we do, it's not surprising that most manufacturers are thinking about saving the planet. As we all know, LPG fuel cars are now coming onto the market, but did you know that in the forklift trucking industry, they've been using LPG fueled vehicles for the last 50 years approximately. This is one of them. The only difference between now and 50 years ago, you probably could have smelled a bit of gas around the back here. Today, you can't smell any gas at all when the vehicle's moving. We identify the right fuel source for the application. For example, in the food industry, it's mainly battery electric trucks that are used. In more arduous applications like foundries, we'll run with diesel or LPG. With the emission levels dropping on LPG trucks, it's giving us more scope to use these in a wider variety of environments. Also here, they do do CNG fuel, which is compressed natural gas. Now this is really eco-friendly. What this means is when this vehicle starts up, the only emissions that come from it are vaporised water. The running costs vary depending on the fuel source that you choose. The most cost-effective way of running trucks is to use compressed natural gas. This is the same as you would get on a, a gas cooker, um, but we've developed a fueling station where cylinders can be refueled on site with zero emissions and the costs are approximately half of those you would get in LPG or diesel. So as I said, extremely eco-friendly. And technology is great, isn't it, anyway? You can get machines to just about do anything you want nowadays. You can, can't you? But I think you're a little bit spoiled, Tim. Oh, you're joking. In oh, fact, man. I think you're a bit of a couch potato, actually, so let's get you doing some work. Get over there and oh. start pumping that hand pump trolley. I'm not going to get carried away with this, am I? Right. Yeah, and don't give up your day job, either. From this, on to something else, we take a look at Brian with his LT Volkswagen Challenge. OK, this week, let's have a look at German engineering. Volkswagen LT35. Now, this panel van is one of the most powerfulest panel vans on the road. It's 150 brake horsepower. Let's go and see what it will do, shall we? Come on. The visual part of this vehicle on the outside is absolutely perfect. 
got alloy wheels on it. It certainly does look nice. Certainly in the same lines as the Mercedes Sprinter. So if you've got a vehicle like this, no problems rolling up at somebody's place. It does really look the part. You can get it sign written on the outside. It really is a winner, I think. Now this van is very stylish. It looks the part, doesn't it? Looks nice on the outside, plenty of space on the inside. Everything appears to be where we want it. So, with 150 brake horsepower under our belt, let's go and give it a road test. Let's go and see what she will really do, shall we? Come on in. Now, being good German engineering, you'd expect things like the gearbox. It's very smooth. Beautiful change on it. You can just drop down the gears, no problem at all. Plenty of torque there to pull you away in any gear you like. Straight up into fifth gear. It's a beautiful little vehicle. Really does have a lot of performance. Now, the only thing I would say is that the steering column would be a bit better if you could adjust it. It's a good position for some people, but you may find, if you're a little smaller, that if the steering column was adjustable, it would be a little bit more comfortable. And even for a big van like this, as it is a long wheelbase high top, it handles extremely well. It doesn't roll, there is no sudden movement, you don't feel like things are going to fall over, especially on twisty roads. Right, as you will notice, these vans don't only come in white, you can have them in a variety of colours. Now let's have a look inside this particular vehicle. As you will notice, first of all, good check strap, stops the door opening wide, but we've got a major fault. When this door's open to its 90 degrees, it's very, very vulnerable. There are no markers at all for when the door's open at night. It can be easily blown back by wind or hit by a vehicle or cyclist. Very vulnerable. Why doesn't it go against the side panel? Secondly, we have these connectors inside here for the heated rear windows, rear washers and wipers when fitted. They're going to easily be knocked off when you're loading or unloading. Be careful. Now, this vehicle is a 3,500 kilos and it will carry an impressive 17.43 kilograms. Now, that's not bad, is it? Very good. This particular vehicle, 150 brake horsepower. Its maximum torque is a 331 Newton meters at 1,800 to 3,000 RPM. Now, that is impressive and it will certainly pull. As you'd expect from Volkswagen, a commercial vehicle of outstanding value. 150 brake horsepower, put dual fuel on it, you can increase your fuel consumption. This is a nice vehicle, but it does have a few problems. Now on the dashboard, there is a lovely little clip for putting all your documentation under. Nice idea, not been in the hands of a customer yet, it's already broken, very fragile. One thing we did notice also on road test, the throttle pedal is just slightly higher than the brake pedal. Now that can be very dangerous when you're pulling away, you can put your foot on that brake pedal, especially if you've got a pair of big boots on. Something to watch out for. Now, with a price tag of just over £21,000 on something like this, they do offer some nice s and m service and maintenance packages for about £99 a year. If you were looking for a new van, would you consider one of these? Yay! German engineering at its best, Brian. Now, earlier on, we were looking at the technology behind forklift trucks. But before we start driving them, I'm interested in finding out how they customise each vehicle for each customer. Yes, Helen, and this is where they do it. Down here, there are three types of forklift truck. And although they might look identical, they're in fact completely different. Our model range is, is what we call a complete range. We, we have everything from a warehouse unit all the way through to a counterbalance. So that's from a, a 1.6 tonne horizontal mover or pallet uh, truck all the way through to a V&A unit. We also have reach trucks working in warehouse applications. They, generally these are, are used for high bay racking and with our reach trucks we'll reach up to 13 metres. The industry has been very pushed towards um, ergonomics and putting more technology into their trucks. Everything from comfort of the driver through to CD players and what the driver requires for the long 12, 14 hour shifts that you may spend in that vehicle. For most of us, forklift trucks look identical. The reality, however, is different as each model is modified to meet customers' needs. Customization of equipment is always based on the customer's needs. We do a very detailed survey of their operation and try and get an understanding of how their operations work and their plans going forward. 
So then from there we will to, uh, meet up with the technical experts back at um, the offices here in, in Aldridge and work up a, a way of um, approaching that problem using the engineering expertise we have within the organisation. Forklifts aren't just removing dry goods, they can also be employed for more delicate operations. Some good examples of the customisation uh, would be for the TWR racing team um, for Le Mans, we developed a handling system to, to handle their, their cars out of their Oxford operation when they're being sent abroad. Um, we've also spent time with the British Museum developing a way of handling um, their mummies, the sarcophagi that the mummies are, are uh, housed in, um, which weigh up to four tonnes and are very unwieldy but need to be handled in a specific way and we've developed that. Once the vehicles are kitted out, they're given the final pre-delivery inspection and then sent out to the customer. So what happens if you can't afford a brand new truck? Or your existing forklift breaks down? Or you just want to make some adjustments? Well, the answer is you bring it in here to the service and truck refurbishment area. We will carry out all repairs on this site. Um, from a, what we call a 24 carat rebuild, which is building the truck from the very base level where we take them back to chassis and all major components replaced, to um, light replacements or an overhead guard. Despite being a niche market, the company operates like most others in the motor industry by offering both a rental and trading scheme. The trading scheme works in a very similar way to the motor industry. Um, most of our units go out on five-year casual rentals and long-term contract rentals and we base that on with a residual value at the end of the term. The life expectancy is pretty much dependent on its use but there is something else to consider. The life expectancy of the truck is um, dependent on the fuel source. We have three main types, there's the battery electric, the LPG and then the diesel. Um, a battery electric is dependent on how well that battery is maintained during its life. The battery should last seven years if well maintained, but if you had an LPG or diesel, you should get 20,000 hours or 15 years use out of a truck. So, we've seen them new and now second hand, but all that's left for us to see is how they work. Join us after the break when Tim and I will be pushing technology to the limits with our forklift truck challenge. Yes, and I'll be testing out the new Renault Midland 18 tonner. And of course we'll be looking at your trucker's gripes. See you then. Hello and welcome back to Trucks. This week we're taking a look at more unusual trucks, forklifts. Later on in the show we'll be seeing what it feels like to operate a forklift truck via computer simulation. But now it's time for Tim. And what will you make of Renault's lightweight Midland? Now, I know what you're thinking, and yes, it does look familiar. In fact, we did cover the Midland range in the last series, but that was at 7.5 tonnes, and things have moved on a notch or two for Midland since then. In fact, you're now looking at the lightest 18-tonner on the UK roads. When you get inside the Midland cab, you realise this is a lightweight derived vehicle that's actually trying to stay in there with the big boys. Now this vehicle's fully loaded. I'm up at 18 tonnes and there's something like 10 and a bit tonnes in there uh, of payload. So again, you get a good feeling of what's going on with the engine, how it feels. Uh, I'm going along now, I'm in fourth, I'm doing about 1600 RPM, I'm in the green section and I'm doing about uh, 30 miles an hour. So it's really, really good. As far as fit and finish is concerned, not bad. I mean, let's face it, Renault did not have a good reputation at one time for fit and finish on the vehicles. But now, look at the Midland, pretty good. The Midland cab is very new, but already a familiar sight on our roads. That said, at 18 tonnes, they are few and far between. The styling is very much on the lines of the new generation vehicles and shows their modern image. The 22018 Renault Midland has a gross vehicle weight of 18 tonnes and an unladen weight of just under 7,000 kilograms, giving a potential of over 10 tonnes payload. It is powered by the Renault DCI 6W engine, rated at 215 brake horsepower at 2400 RPM and a torque of 700 Newton metres between 1200 and 1500 RPM. 
Well, it's certainly the lightest, but is it the best? Well, I have to admit, I'm slightly dubious of people when they claim to have the lightest vehicles, because it usually means a compromise on quality. But in the case of the Midland, I was wrong. In fact, it's a great urban distribution vehicle and should prove a hit with many operators. So light really is better than Tim. Now it's time for that part of the show when we address the problems on your minds in Trucker's Gripes. There are over 27 million vehicles on our roads, 550,000 of which are part of the heavy haulage industry. So why, despite making up such small percentages of vehicles, trucks and their drivers are viewed by car users with such contempt? I don't think that uh, car drivers see truck drivers in favourable terms, but I think that's possibly because they're not familiar with driving vehicles and uh, understanding some of the difficulties that drivers of trucks have in overtaking, accelerating, braking, etc. Um, uh, truck drivers likewise are less than complimentary about uh, car drivers for pretty obvious reasons. Unless you've driven a, a lorry, you can't really see the problems. Um, it's a totally different thing from driving a car. The cars are just silly. Just don't think about what a truck is trying to do. Without the trucks, the, com the country would come to a standstill anyway. With Britain suffering from one of the worst transport infrastructures in Western Europe, the only way for the majority of our goods to be transported is by road. The question is, how can we make the average road user a little more understanding of the problems faced by hauliers? Short of enabling people to jump in a truck and actually see what it's like to drive one of those with a load of cars whizzing all around them, then I think it's nigh on impossible. Um, yeah, people need to appreciate you live in a consumer society, which means these goods have got to get somewhere and we do that job. It was no different than 200 years ago, guys driving stagecoaches across countries. And we're doing that same job now. Um, without us, all of the goods and all these people wearing ties doing their jobs, none of it means anything. Nobody will be getting anything. So, you know, we're a necessary evil. Only we ain't so evil, right? It is estimated by the year 2020 that there will be around 32 million cars on our roads. The congestion problems of today will seem like a dream. And unless the country's infrastructure improves, the amount of freight transported will also rise. If this is to be the case, cars and truck drivers are going to have to find a way to get along. The question is, how? That definitely moved you. Don't forget to keep your comments coming in. And for more info, you can always log on to our website at Men & Motors. Now, Helen, have you got a computer? Yes. Now, what do you like at computer games? Rubbish, but I'm sure I'm going to be put to the test. Now, I'm sure you've heard of virtual reality for the aviation industry. I have, and actually, isn't that there's something on PCs at the moment that's really great? Yeah, but have you heard of virtual reality for forklift trucks? Um, no, but I'm sure I'm going to be uh, pointing in the right direction. Oh, come this way. Well, Helen, get yourself in there now. Oh, I'm feeling a bit nervous already. Oh, this is a computer simulation program of a warehouse, and the company used this to demonstrate the products such as forklift trucks. It was developed for uh, exhibitions and trade shows and that sort of thing to demonstrate to potential customers and clients the, uh, the feasibility of what the, what the truck could do. Helen, have you got your headset on now? Yep. Right, OK, now have you looked at all the controls? Are you sure you're happy? Right, you ready? Starting up? Not much faith, Tim. I know, I know. Well, I've seen your driving. We've made it mobile now so that we don't need to have the actual forklift truck there with us. Let's uh, start the machine up. And move forward, can you? Brilliant. All right, you're moving yeah. forward, really. Yeah. What's been the biggest challenge in actually developing it? Probably finding the head unit. Uh, many different types out there. This one was particularly uh, designed around games. The controls are so sensitive. Why? What do you mean by it? What sensitive? In what way? Well, as soon as you touch them, you're moving. Right. Okay. And you can move at quite a fast speed. Now on the forklift trucks, you've got really like the counterbalance, you've got a turret and you've got the reach. The one that you're on now is a turret truck. And if you move forward now a bit more, let's have a look, at, let's pick a, a spot, for you, a bay that we can put this into. Let's have a look around, let's pick a, a bay that we want to put. <gasps> our, come on, Ooh. keep going, you'll be all right. Ooh, get higher exciting. and higher, keep going. Uh, let's get it higher then. Oh, oh no, not that's lower. lower. <laughs> <laughs> keep going, go on, that's it. Have a look around. Uh, no, there's right. something in there, look. No, no, that's like a brick wall. Not even yeah. you could park them in there. <laughs> right, carry on. And it's actually quite difficult once you're trying to manoeuvre um, your load into the shelf. And I think that's because although my eyes can see what I'm trying to do, I have no depth perception. 
So it's very hard to judge where is the right place. It lacks the depth perception, the stereo vision for, for each eye to be able to, to judge any distances. Um, also, it's quite a narrow field of view. So it, it is a lot more difficult than the real thing. But you think about it, I mean, it's a lot better than trying it out. It's I mean, so, would you like to try yeah. this out and real, for real? I tell you what, it's so precise, Tim. I think this will be a really useful tool for demonstration purposes whilst training. We're looking now toward a new piece of software that we call Warehouse Builder that actually designs new buildings, uh, warehouses, and will simulate trucks moving around. And you can join that as being part of the environment of looking at where things are moving, what they're doing, and how it's all interacting and moving around that world. Down a bit now. Oh, no. Down, down, down. down, down. Now no. I need to go to the left, don't I? Yeah. So I need to press the second button, I think. Right, go on then. See if that's right. Keep going, okay. keep going. Oh. Ooh. Is it going in? Oh, keep first going, yeah. time lucky. Very that impressive. is loaded. Well, keep going then. It's in. Is that it? That's it. And I that's haven't it. crashed and burned. Look how wonderful that is, everybody. Oh, yeah. Very Can impressive. You see? Yeah, beginner's luck, I think, more than anything else. Oh, how amazing. Oh, I'm absolutely exhausted. So it's a good job it's the end of the show. But don't forget to watch us next week when Tim will be test driving the Volvo Flea. Yeah, and Brian will be test driving the new Vauxhall Combo. And we'll have more truckers' gripes for you. See you then.